Power Stroke 6.0 cam position sensor. You don't have to go under the truck. You can access it from up top. So go ahead and drain your coolant. It doesn't take that long. It only takes about 15 minutes to drain the coolant and pull the top components off. But right there, and we see where my quarter inch extension is. That's where your sensor is. It's hidden right behind the power steering pump. Then rip your air intake and your lower coolant hose off. All right, there you go. You got a lot of room to work with in here. So I went ahead and disconnected the cam positioning sensor harness and it's right there where my thumb is that's the sensor <laughs> you see how easy that is though and look at this look how greasy and grammy that is i'm gonna hit it with some hit it with some electric parts cleaner and then wrap it with tape again <clears throat> that's all cooked oil dirt road grime yeah that's nasty if that seeps into your connections definitely cause your truck to stall out so let's pull that cam now cam sensor and see what we got okay i cracked the bolt loose but before we pull the cam uh sensor out i'm gonna show you this plug real quick you see that brown outline that's a rubber gasket sometimes if that rubber gasket's bad water can get to these connections and you'll get a fault so and that's what can cause your truck to stall out this one seems to be good but you want to make sure and check this gasket make sure it's all good before you plug it back together all right and then when you pull it out you pull the you unplug the sensor make sure that gasket's in there before you plug in the new sensor <laughs> very important okay here's the old one when you pull this out you got to pull it out like you're pulling an abs line so just pop it free of the mating surface and then wiggle it out and it should pop right out your power steering line is going to be kind of in the way that one right there that one so be careful as you pass that especially when you install the new one so we're going to inspect this as you see right at the tip it's metal shavings but that's not bad that's like engine break-in shavings um, uh, that's actually another way to tell it this is still good is it's still got its magnetic uh, surface so what's going on in here is probably uh, liquid getting into the wire and not actually the sensor itself but we saw this here it means the mating surface see that build up it means the mating surface has created some distance from the cam shaft to the cam shaft center sensor that can also cause it to shut since we already have this out, it's probably still good, but we're gonna put the new one in just because. So let's compare and check magnet, magnetic polarity. And it's obviously working because it picked up my socket. Oh, shoot. So the length is right, width is right, it'll fit good. So why did I replace the cam sensor in the first place? Well, I was driving along and the truck just shut off, it stalled on me. So, uh, no codes present, and I know there's only a couple of things that actually cause that, and one of them is the camshaft sensor. And actually, after further review, here's what I found about this sensor. So here's the old one, all cleaned off. I was gonna save it, but I know this is the culprit, because listen to this. You hear that? Yeah, that's the cap and it's loose from the shaft. And that can definitely change the distance of your polarity when it's reading the cam camshaft. So, this is a bad camshaft sensor. And you know, after 238,000 miles, it actually did pretty good. All right, we got her. So the hardest part about this whole job, no joke, was just taking off that lower coolant line um the hot coolant line so that was a little bit of a pain because it was just baked on there i don't think it's ever been replaced 
Um, I almost went and bought a new one. I almost decided to cut it, but I'm glad I did it because it's, it's, it's actually pretty fine. So if you're good at working on power strokes, that'll take you like 15 minutes tops. Uh, if, if you're new to it and you're watching this video as like a guide, there's more videos out there that can help you remove things. I didn't film the air filter and stuff being taken off because that's, you know, kind of a no brainer. And if you can't do that yourself, take it to a shop. Um, but it wasn't very difficult. Uh, so yeah, there is a way to do it from the top, completely from the top. And that's good if you're like a backyard mechanic and you don't want to lay on gravel, because I hate laying on gravel. Um, and if you take it all apart from the top, you can actually get eyes on that sensor and you can tell what's going on with it. So the last step is just run your truck, drive it like normal, and wait for any check engine lights, if even that. Give it about 10 miles. If no check engine lights pop up, you should be All good right, to go. So I'm in my Tundra right now. I went to pick up some 50-50 antifreeze. This stuff is fine. You can use this in your power strokes. I don't care what power stroke gurus say. I have owned six power strokes in my life. Three at one point. At one point in time in my life, I've owned three. And um, I have always used this cheap stuff or just distilled water. I've used the cheap stuff where I uh, where it gets really cold because you don't want your coolant uh, freezing up and you can use just distilled water for a long time a lot of people say you can't just use water because it's gonna rust blah, blah, blah. i've never had that problem never had that problem ever so i don't know what they're talking about maybe they added something in their truck that wasn't right or correct maybe they added salt in there but distilled water or the cheap stuff 50 50 uh this is good for ford uh universal stuff it's yellow it's fine you can use it like I said, I'm not like a guru like everybody. If you want peace of mind, get motocraft. I don't care. But this has always worked for me and six power strokes down the road. And I've only sold power strokes for a flip profit or uh, because I've moved and I've loved all my power strokes. And it's funny, as you say, because I'm in my Tundra. It's one of the most reliable vehicles in the world. And there's my Ford. The least reliable, one of the least reliable vehicles in the world. But... I've never had any problems with Fords. I've only done maintenance. I've always just maintained them and they're fine. Obviously, I've never pushed them to the limit like some donkeys do. That's where you run into issues, I believe. Or with the 6.0 anyway. The 6.0 is a powerhouse. It's good for towing and it's fine for long distance towings. And uh, I've never had any issue with any six of my... I've had the 7.3, the 6.7, and the 6.0s. And I've never had any issues with them. Like, except for the videos I have on my my uh youtube channel where i had to go fix like i had a you know on my six seven i had a manifold bolt pop off and that's normal that happens to all of them and uh i've never had a 6.0 problem though um so it's just people that are running tuners on their on their dang power strokes they ruin them like that because they're not meant to be horsepower power horses they're supposed to be torque beasts and they're supposed to tow for you and tow and do a good job as long as you stay under their limit you know a lot of power strokes have like a max eighteen thousand capacity stay below the max and you should be fine let's add some coolant to the truck See? shall we tundra most reliable power stroke not as reliable but i've never had problems with them so can't complain first things first turn the truck on wait for your piggy tails to go away uh -huh. nah, 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 nah. Ooh, that was kind of a long crank. That's what we're trying to fix. Then you add the coolant as it runs. I'm going to do this with one hand. There we go. Alright, looks like I'm going to unbox my next video. Here we go, what's in this box? Oh yeah, headlights. What's wrong with my old headlights? Oh, no? sorry, it's squeaky because it's wet. Remember, I spilled cooler. Yeah, it's starting to crack. Ah. All right, see you in my next video.